السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دس واز انسپائرڈ بائی اے کنورسیشن آئی 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 ہیو ود اے کرسچن نا وی ٹاک اباؤٹ الٹ آف تھنگس ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم اینڈ ون آف دوز تھنگس وی ٹاک اباؤٹ واز آلکوہل کنسمشن یو نو ان اے ریلیجیس پرسپیکٹو نا شی ٹرائی ٹو ڈیفینڈ دا بیبلیکل اسٹینس آف آلکوہل ڈرنکن یو نو آلکوہل کنسمشن she tries to uh, defend the stance of the Bible of drinking alcohol quote and unquote in moderation she said now this is what she said she said drinking is not a sin drinking to drunkenness is the sin now so I asked her are there any biblical parameters as to how much you can drink not to be drunk you know since drinking is not a sin but being drunk is You know, uh, she had pointed out that there are 59 verses that refer to alcohol uh, as an accepted part of normal culture. That's in the Bible. 27 passages call wine a blessing from God. 19 passages describe the loss of wine as a curse. Wow. But my question is, what are the biblical parameters since we know that different people have different alcohol tolerance thresholds? Now, assuming two guys sit together at a table and start drinking. Now, one of these guys can tolerate alcohol better than the other. Now, going by the Bible, if one of the guys will become physically and mentally impaired, which is a definition of alcohol, you know, a uh, definition of drunkenness, actually. Now, let's say one of those guys, by drinking two cups, he'll be physically and mentally impaired. And the other guy will get drunk only after consuming nine cups. So now, if they each consume five cups, definitely one man will sin. Going by what the Bible says, that drinking is not a sin, but it's being drunk that the sin is. So one of them, if they both have five cups, one of them will drink and get drunk. And the other one will have no sin. Right? How practical is that? I mean, how practical is the allowance, you know, for alcohol consumption in the Bible when some people will not be affected by the same amount of alcohol that will make others completely drunk? Now, think about it. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you you're from Hawaii, then you might be able to drink more alcohol than the guy from Somalia. Or the guy from Somalia can drink more than the guy from Brazil. Or the guy from Brazil can drink more than the guy from Yemen. Or the guy from Yemen can drink more than the guy from Australia. There is nothing like that. The Bible doesn't even tell you, okay, you're not 21, you can't drink. Or you're not 18 in some places, you can't drink. No biblical parameters. But then it's supposed to be fair that if you drink and you get drunk, then you're screwed. So she came back and she said, uh, you know, she, she actually tried to make an analogy with eating. She said, like eating, the amount it takes to reach the limit varies from person to person. Just as with eating, gluttony is a sin. Just as with drinking, drunkenness is a sin. Then I said, if somebody eats to their fill, of course they know they're full. Because, you know, you've eaten to your fill, you know you're full. Now when they eat in excess, is gluttony, which is a sin. And that is completely understandable. But with drinking, you don't have a pouch that tells you, okay, it's time for you to stop. I'm full now, stop. That's with alcohol consumption. There's nothing that tells you, oh, well, you're, you're full now, stop drinking. No. Your limit is based on how your brain tolerates alcohol in your blood. So how will you ever know your limit if you don't get drunk first? I mean, how do pharmacists prescribe a dosage of a drug if they don't try the drug in a sample population? I mean, even pharmacists do this, you know? So where is the prescription in the Bible? How does the Bible prescribe dosage of alcohol for you? Absolutely senseless. Now, but, you know, you can drink, but if you go over your dosage, you're screwed. But then there's no dosage. If you go over your dosage, then you are uh, a sinner. But then there's no dosage. 
How practical is that? How fair is that? But then she deserted that argument for obvious reasons. Then she decides to ask, why did Allah create medicinal properties in alcohol but totally banned it? She said doctors uh, say that if you drink one glass of wine a day it can help you reduce cholesterol in your body. Of course, that, that's uh, a fact. You know, that's completely true. That alcohol helps reduce cholesterol. You know, that's one of the few things alcohol can, you know, that you can benefit from alcohol. I mean, there are medicinal properties that were even recently discovered by medical practitioners in alcohol. So I told her for my own human thinking, you know, this is nothing special. This is not something I had to look up from, you know, the Quran or Hadith. This was just my own everyday, you know, thoughts. I told her, I said, <clears throat> fatty fish helps lower cholesterol. But guess what? It is not intoxicating. Walnut helps lower cholesterol. But guess what? It is not intoxicating. Oatmeal helps lower cholesterol. But guess what? It is not intoxicating. Old bran helps lower cholesterol. But it is not intoxicating. That was just my own, you know, uh, response to that. But guess what? The Quran has a much more... I mean, it can never get better than this. The Quran actually... 1,429 years ago has a response for questions like this. But then you're going to have to stay tuned for my next video. Which is going to include that response from the Quran. We're talking about things that are just being discovered recently. The Quran actually talked about or responded to a question like this 1,429 years ago. But then you're going to have to stay tuned for my next video that is going to be included plus much more interesting stuff so I'm going to throw my uh, slogan in if Allah said it I'll spread it if Muhammad did it I'm with it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuhu